Hi, this is Dino, and I want to show you um, an OpenIDC Connect API proxy that's running within Apigee Edge that allows you to build an OpenIDC, OpenIDC Connect um, login experience uh, on any IDP, on any uh, identity provider. So what's necessary for that is uh, uh, a couple of the API proxies. One is the OpenID Connect Core. Um, and that's defined in the OpenID Connect standard. Uh, we've built one that works with uh, a pluggable uh, IDP. It's got a couple of endpoints uh, that you see here, um, an authorization endpoint, uh, token, and an auth endpoint. And these just support the different options within OpenID Connect. Uh, and we'll see this actually working in practice uh, in a bit. I've also got some other apparatus set up in Apigee Edge. One is the uh, OpenID Connect uh, product, core product. That's an API product. Really, it's just a, an, a way to a provide access to that API proxy. And we've decorated it with some uh, custom attributes, one of which is the URL of the login uh, endpoint. So that when a client calls into Apigee Edge requesting um, authorization, um, uh, Apigee Edge will redirect the client to this, will first validate that the client's uh, a known client at Apigee Edge, and then redirect the client to this endpoint to allow the user to authenticate. Uh, and this endpoint is a, a web app um, that I've set up uh, to support this demonstration. There's also, so that's the API product. There's also a uh, developer app that has access to that API product. And we'll see that here. Um, I've set this up. It's called OIDC Sample App. Uh, and uh, we've got the callback handler uh, for the three-legged flow and a, and a logo URL for this particular app. So the idea is that each different app will have a different uh, callback URL and a different um, logo URL uh, and, of course, different consumer key and consumer secret. So those are the uh, things that are set up within Apigee Edge. Let me go back to the list of API proxies. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is because I want to turn on tracing in that um, OIDC core API proxy. Now, what I'm going to do is go over to a different web browser tab. What I've got here is a form in a browser that allows me to fill out information for the OpenID Connect uh, kickoff, uh, for the URL that kicks off the authentication. And I'm going to fill in some information here. You can see the base path, the client ID, and the client secret. OpenID, uh, OpenID Connect... Uh, prescribes the structure of the URL that kicks off the the authentication and it looks something like this the, the client has got to pass client ID the redirect URI the response type uh, optionally state and nonce and this require the requested scope so this form just allows me to build that interactively and when I all click on it um, what we're going to do is um, open up, uh, we're going to send that request into Apigee Edge. Apigee Edge verifies that the client ID is valid and then redirects to the registered login URL. And so I've got a, a login uh, web app experience. I'll put in my credentials. And um, now it's got from Apigee Edge information about the app based on that client ID that was sent in. This login app is saying, okay, Apigee Edge is telling me this is the logo for that app. This is the name of the app. If you wanted, you could also uh, configure this login app to display other information about the app, including the developer. Uh, and also you can see that it's requesting specific scopes. And this uh, list of scopes is not um, modifiable by the user. Basically, the app is saying, I want these scopes, and the user just gets to say yes or no. So the user can either consent or decline consent. Um, what we're going to do is use the login app to consent. So we've already authenticated. The, the user is authentic. Now the user is going to say, yes, I will give that uh, scope to the app. And remember, we asked for the response type of, of a code. And so we got the code back for, with the redirect uh, from that login app. Uh, and if you, uh, that's all being done. That code is being generated by Apigee Edge. So the first request was just a get. We verified the uh, API key, that is to say the client ID, and verified the nonce 
and then did some lookups on the, the login uh, app, uh, the, the login URL for the API product and the uh, information around the app, and then just issued the 302 redirect. So you can see that um, we're getting a response of a 302 redirect, uh, and that is sent here. You can see what, what we sent back to the original browser. Uh, this second request came from the login app into Apogee Edge, and it said, okay, we've got consent, so what I'd like is for Apogee Edge to generate the code. Apogee Edge generates that authorization code and then redirects back to the, um, to the login app, and the login app just passes that right back to the browser, and that's what you saw in that prior page, this page, is just the result of that um, code being retrie returned. So once we have the code, what good does that do? Um, so let's see, I've also fixed up this page, this web page, so that it gives me the, the post command. It doesn't actually do it through the, um, through the browser, although it could, maybe I should do that. But it gives me the post command that I can run from a command line to generate a token from that code. So I can just copy that, uh, walk over to a, a terminal window, and run that, that command. And what it's going to do is exchange the authorization code that was retrieved via the OpenID Connect uh, for uh, a token. And this is an opaque uh, OAuth token. You can see uh, the access token is here. Uh, and we've got a refresh token, we've got um, the expiry of the access token, um, and so on. You also see that we've got some information about the user that was authenticated, um, and that is, in this case, just the, the subject of the user. This is an optional part of the token response that you can give back to the client. In fact, all of this is optional. Really, the most important part is just the access token itself and probably the expiry of the access token. The rest of this you can include or exclude from the response uh, as you see fit. So that's OpenID Connect with just the code response. Um, but I can also change this. So let me wipe that out and say not code, but let's get a token. And so we'll change the state of that. And I'm going to need a different nonce. Uh, because it is enforced by this API proxy. And what we'll do is we'll run um, the, the um, oops, apparently that nonce is not unique. So what we'll do is we'll run that again, that uh, exchange again, and it's doing the same thing. Uh, I could have uh, implemented a way to remember the user, you know, with browser sessions, but uh, didn't bother implementing that. So I'm going to re-authenticate, and now the um, the login and consent app is asking for consent. I'm going to grant consent, and it just gives me the the token directly. So you can see with a different response type asking for token, I just get that directly, and I can also modify that to be ID token. This is going to be a JWT. And now again, I've got to I've got to change the nonce. Um, so I get a new URL. We're going to go through this authentication one more time, just for the purposes of demonstration. Uh, we'll sign in. We'll get the uh, the request the um, request for consent. And once we get the the consent, now Apogee Edge is uh, generating and issuing a JWT, which we can verify via one of any number of tools. So let's try JWT IO. Uh, you should be able to drop it in here and you'll see the JWT um, payload with all the claims. And of course, these claims are customizable as well. Um, I can put whatever whatever I want in there, the issued at time, I can have a JTI, you know, all, all up to you how to, how to do that. Whether you want this to be RS-256 or HS-256, it's also up to you. So that shows you that Apogee Edge can be um, an open ID Connect provider on top of any IDP that you have a lot of flexibility in that regard.